Thank you for um, taking some time to watch uh, this video. This is a first of several uh, videos that we wanted to produce to explain to our parents and our students and our community um, this concept of assessment and how it fits in the overall instructional program within Durango School District 9R. Um, there are two types of assessments we deal with as a school district. One is state um, assessments, which are shifting to more of a national focus. Um, our students in Durango will be taking the PARC assessment uh, beginning this year. PARC is Partnership for the Assessment of Readiness for College and Career, and it assesses students' um, ability in reading, writing, and mathematics. Um, the state also assesses students' mastery of standards in science and social studies on the CMAS science and social studies assessment. Those are um, national and state level assessments that we participate. Those are summative assessments which give us a chance to look at um, did our students master state standards um, over a period of time and did they retain that knowledge? Um, that's one type of assessment. As a district, we've been working on formative assessments. And formative assessments are assessments that you can administer quickly, get results back quickly, um, and make decisions about um, student learning, make decisions about instruction in the classroom on a regular basis. And that's the measures that we in Durango have been working so hard on over the last two and a half years, is building a system of assessment tasks that teachers can use when they feel students are ready to demonstrate mastery of state standards. And so to develop a system of formative assessments really empowers our teachers to utilize that information on a regular basis to change instruction when students aren't achieving. And so this system of formative assessments will provide teachers real-time data that they can use today um, to make decisions on, on student struggles that they might be encountering in the classroom. So again, the, the challenge right now is the, the national uh, perception of over-assessment. Um, and I can tell you that there certainly is some validity to feeling as if there's a lot of assessment. We've gone through the closure of TCAP, or former CSAP exam, while we've been piloting new assessments, and while districts across the state have been developing local assessment systems um, that certainly give a perception of lots of testing uh, happening in our classrooms. The state assessments, um, for example, on PARC, um, there are nine hours of assessments for third graders, nine hours of assessments it's, that third graders would participate in, and that goes up to 11 hours at the high school level. Uh, for students in grades 9, 10, and 11. And so that's the amount of time that um, students are actually engaged in performing on that state assessment for reading, writing, and math. So out of the uh, 1,244 hours of, inst of instructional time that a student has in, in the classroom, that's 11 hours or 0.72% of the school year that's actually taken up on those assessments in reading, writing, and mathematics. Um, CMAS is an exam um, that is relatively new for us as well, and that's science and social studies for students in grades 4, 5, 7, 8, and 12, um, and those exams are measuring a mastery of science and social studies standards um, during those key grade levels to determine if students are in fact building their knowledge and content um, awareness as they progress through our K-12 system. In, in the past, teachers often spent um, time in the classroom reviewing uh, specific standards that were being assessed. Um, that came from a lack of alignment between the academic standards and the tools used to assess. Um, we provided standards to teachers and then we tested certain other topics and therefore it led to the concept of I have to review certain content that my students will be tested on. Today's assessments are aligned to the very standards that teachers are expected to cover in the classroom. Instead of the, the days where we would spend weeks with TCAP practice books, um, going over those key skills that TCAP chose to test, um, our teaching to the test really occurs 175 days of the year because we're teaching the very standards that students are assessed on. Um, our formative assessment system will also align to those very standards. So as we gather data throughout the year, on common agreed upon assessment tasks that teachers can use when they feel students have mastered content, um, that will also give them some ability to know if students have in fact mastered the content uh, that we're responsible to teach. Again, as I shared at the beginning, this is one of a few uh, videos that we'll be producing to really help you understand the full gamut 
of our instructional program in Durango School District. Um, in future videos, we'll, we'll talk more about our formative assessment process and how teachers have been engaged and will continue to be engaged in that process of really determining how students can best be assessed in an embedded fashion that prevents students from feeling uh, the impact of another assessment. Um, we will also talk more about how this contributes to um, our overall teacher evaluation process and how we have built a system that really allows a body of evidence so that our teachers can truly know the impact and the effectiveness of their work in the classroom. This plan that we've developed um, to link to our teacher evaluation plan actually ties assessment in a manner that gives teachers great control over student learning and it's a teacher created plan uh, the 60 of our teachers in our school district have been working for a year uh, to develop on um, our measures of student learning. And then a lot of conversation has occurred around our tool that we've built called School Vault. And School Vault is not the initiative. School Vault is to support our efforts over the last two and a half years. And so we look forward to sharing more about that tool, how it's being used, how it's continuing to develop as teachers use it and give feedback on it. Um, and what we see as a vision of assessment moving forward taking time as a constant, and shifting to learning. It is not about students learning on our timeline, it's about students learning on their timeline and providing the support for our teachers to ensure that every student progress through our K-12 system successful and building their skills that are continually built upon as they progress through our kindergarten through 12th grade system. We, we are always interested in feedback um, from, our, from staff, from uh, parents, from constituents around our work in our system um, and continue to offer those opportunities, whether it is community forums, whether it is uh, opportunities to come and speak to the board, whether it is scheduling a meeting with myself or any member of my team. Uh, we are open to discussing and continuing to develop together as a community uh, this overall plan to ensure that our students are truly prepared for the challenges they'll face as they leave our K-12 system, whether they choose to go to college, whether they choose to go into the career path, or whether they choose to go into the military or trade. Um, it is important to us that students have all those doors open to them as they leave our Durango School District. So again, thank you for your time today, and I look forward to the next video and sharing more about our plan.